what's up, what's up? I felt so excited to hop on here. I wanted to offer this free training because it's something that continuously comes up. I do a lot of energy healing and a lot of energy work with my clients. As a physiologist, it's really the central focus of everything that I do to help people live into their most exquisite health. It really always comes back to the energy. Energy is everything. And in my practice over the years, I've seen patterns of very specific wounds that many of us have, like core feelings that have created what we call an energetic imprint like on the aura of your being. And they may not even be yours. We could have energetic imprints from our families and we kind of connect that. We share that karmically. And that's not what this training is about, but I can certainly get into energetic imprints and what they are another time. What we want to do is start to see them for what they are and dissolve them so that you're not stuck in the same pattern. So what's been coming up lately, and I've worked through this personally, is um, a core feeling of abandonment. And what's interesting about this, in my own journey, seeing that my daughter has experienced on some level this energetic imprint because before the age of seven, she went through her mom, me, and her dad getting a divorce. And so it could have very well created an energetic imprint of abandonment for her, created a wound for her. And so that's what helped me kind of dive into um, some of this work was specifically to make sure that I was being preventative and that I would be able to help her heal. And then going through that, also seeing in my own life how the abandonment wound has presented itself in some patterns and behaviors that I've gone through into adulthood. So it's all about becoming aware, right? And I think that many of us experience on some level at some point in life the feelings of abandonment. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you, it, you suffer through divorce or the loss of a loved one. It could just simply mean at some point as a kid, you experienced emotional abandonment that you felt like your feelings weren't being heard or that your feelings weren't being nurtured or that you weren't um, allowed to speak your voice. And in those moments, you felt powerless. You felt helpless. You felt less than. You felt like you weren't being protected. And that creates this fear, right? This fear of being un safe. And that can show up in adulthood in many ways. So this abandonment wound starts to repeat itself in patterns such as um, the fear of intimacy, but also the fear of rejection. So it could show up in the subtlest of ways, like maybe your need to surround yourself with material possessions. That's something I've experienced. Like in order to validate my sense of belonging, let me go out and shop and purchase material goods because then it will make me feel safe. Let me, um, you know, seek out relationships and seek external validation and seek external approval so that I can feel safe, cared for, nurtured, right? It's all to avoid the pain of feeling abandoned when we were younger. So that's just you know, a little bit, just like scratching the surface on what the abandoned wound is and how it can show up in adult life, but it could take on many forms. Um, so again, if you relate, like if you find yourself trying to control outcomes, if you find yourself very focused on, you know, goals, having money, having status, having material things, um, is seeking love, seeking, um, again, just approval. Maybe it's still seeking approval from your parents, right? These are all ways it shows up. And then on the flip side, it's also this fear of commitment, like maybe being in an intimate relationship with somebody and then seeing that anchoring starts to take place in love and then freaking out and wanting to run away. It can also show up in, again, a very subtle way in terms of just daily interactions with the people that you love and getting into arguments and having that be a very deep trigger for you. Like 
it's normal. You know, we interact, we have discussions with people. And for you, it might be, wow, like I'm in an argument and I'm feeling really pissed. And it's maybe not that big a deal, but you wind up blowing up and losing your temper and creating this argument. And again, it could be because in that moment you're being triggered and it's taking you back to this place when you felt powerless and you felt like your voice didn't matter. You felt like you couldn't be heard. So of course, when you get into an argument as an adult, it triggers you, right? Makes sense. So let's get into how we can start to heal the energetic imprint of abandonment. So if you feel like this is something you have, what are we going to do about it, right? That's really the question. And there's so much that we can do. And I wanted to offer this up as kind of like a like a step-by-step -step approach, right? And it's really, it's not about steps, okay? And in the work I do, the deeper, deeper energy healing work that I do with my clients, it's never step-by-step. -step. We're dealing with human physiology and emotions, the mind, the body, and spirit, and integrating all of them so that they're kind of all connected. But I wanted to hop on here and offer some value. I think you guys will get a lot out of this. Um, I see some fabulous people hooking up here. Hi, oh, Carissa, Jennifer, Hillary. Hey, guys, Davida. Good to see you, Elliot. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay, so how do we heal? How do we start to heal that abandonment wound? Well, first, it's a matter of getting, you know, getting real with it and identifying, like, is this something that I see showing up as a pattern that keeps me stuck, keeps me feeling less than awesome as an adult? So it's starting to identify that perhaps this could be something that you didn't get a chance to heal. And now here's the gift, right? When you get triggered and you're in that argument or you see like, why do I always focus so much on trying to control the outcomes? It doesn't feel good, but what is that about? Can I go in there, see it for what it is? Because the second you can see it is the second you can feel it. And when you feel it, you can heal it. Okay. It's it's, again, pretty simple, but easier said than done. So how do you know? Well, you can stay connected to the present moment, right? You can become aware, and I talk about this a lot in practice, is when something doesn't feel good, notice it, right? Like, this doesn't feel good for me. Stand in that emotional truth. Be observant, but not judgmental. If a feeling comes up, we tend to go, oh my God, I don't want to feel that. And we avoid it. Or, oh my God, how could I feel that? And we judge it. And either way, it leaves us feeling pretty low vibe and pretty icky, which just fuels the pattern more. We never get that opportunity to heal because we're running from it or we're judging it. And in that criticism, we actually create more of that pattern. We create more of that, like, I don't feel good about myself. I don't feel like I'm enough. I don't feel safe. Right. So we're kind of fueling that fire. Continue noticing it. Be diligent about seeing it every time it comes up. So if you were to just run a little experiment and focus in on like a few things, a few triggers, right? And notice every time you get triggered and you see this pattern and now you can go, oh, okay, I see what's happening, right? The triggers, the cravings to, you know, maybe, you know, get that external validation, uh, not feeling good enough unless you have that or unless you're striving for something outside of yourself. Notice what's going on for you, right? And then stepping into that place of like, oh my God, okay, this happened to me as a kid, but here's where you can switch on the honor part. You can see this as a gift, right? It happened not to you, it happened for you as a kid to enlighten you, love and honor that pain and then you can make a decision now as a conscious adult, I am no longer available to hang on to the suffering for it. I am going to go back in time and I'm going to heal that wound. So now you're going to breathe into the emotion. Instead of running from that pain, you're going to just breathe into it. Feel what it felt like as a kid that didn't understand. You know, maybe you were six, seven years old and, and maybe your parents were getting a divorce and you didn't understand what was going on and you thought it was you and you felt like your world got rocked and you were unsafe, right? So sit with that as an adult. 
seeing that little kid with his or her needs not being met, his or her voice not being heard, not feeling safe, not feeling protected, and just start to nurture that younger version of you, right? Invite him or her in through your own imagery in your mind. Like you can literally time pop and go back to maybe it was a specific instance, or maybe there are several images that come up for you for those past experiences. Connect into that so that you can help repair that abandonment piece. Because now again, as this awakened, more conscious adult that does have the framework to understand that you do in fact feel safe, you can go back and start to say, it's okay, it's okay. So you wanna start practicing through that breath, right? I am safe. It's okay to be here in my body. I can grow roots. I can belong here on this earth. I am lovable. Say what you feel is going to help nurture that scared little person that never felt like she got heard or he got heard or validated. And you literally sit and give that reassurance back. The wound, and now we're gonna get into the root chakra. The wound actually occurs because, so, so just to give you a background, if you're not familiar with the chakras, the root chakra is at the base of the spine. It's at your tailbone. And it is like your primal chakra. It is kind of what um, governs your primal needs for food, clothing, shelter. It's like, it's, it is essentially your safety. It is what roots you into your body and into your earth and into your tribe, your family, and gives you a sense of belonging and also keeps you safe by having those basic needs met. And it's also responsible for fight or flight. So when you don't feel safe, it's gonna trigger this fight or flight response, drive up cortisol and put you into a sympathetic drive response, right? Which is a stress response. Hmm. seeing how like all these cool dots are being connected here, right? So it always comes back to the physiology. And if we can clear this energetic imprint, we're talking on a cellular level, then it's gone. It's dissolved permanently. What unfortunately happens is a lot of self-help, no judgment, but a lot of self-help only goes into this surface level. But it doesn't drop into your biology because your cellular structures is where things take shape. And so we have to clear that. And it's, that's it. It's, it, you literally, I always like to say, it's like you're genetically re-engineering yourself as a more awakened, strong, like, human. And that's the whole point of being human is that we get to adapt, we get to evolve, we get to ascend, right? Into stronger, greater, more bliss, whatever you can contain you can have, but we start down deep in the cells. So your root chakra, uh, again, is responsible for fight or flight. In, uh, in tradition, it's represented by red. It's red energy. And so the wound actually occurs because the soul, right, your soul doesn't feel safe. And so if you kind of think about this in a visual sense, it's like the soul pulls up from the root, right, where it should be anchored, and that's the wound. And the gift as an adult is to restore the relationship with the root chakra, is bringing that root chakra into balance, into harmony. So you want to let this part of you open up at the root so that you can receive back your soul, right? You can bring your root chakra into this anchored balance and you're going to get really grounded here. So what I like to have my clients do is actually do grounding. There are many, many benefits of grounding, but one of them is to literally move energy into your, into your root chakra. So grounding also creates electron um, transfer 
at the site of where your skin hits the earth. And when you pull in those electrons, you actually nourish your body and you actually free it of, um, you give it antioxidants, direct antioxidant hit uh, and eliminate free radicals. So boom, another physiological benefit. But you want to um, either place your tailbone on, like, on the earth or even just your feet. I find that's much easier to do and it's just as effective. So placing your feet on the grass or on the sand or just something natural on the dirt and really connecting in, 30 seconds is all it takes, getting those electrons from the field, from nature, and get them absorbed in through your lower body. But also while you're doing it is just breathing into that and saying, I am stable. I am strong. I am stable. I am safe. Right? And then you can practice some Qi Kong. And maybe I'll throw a link to a video I have. Um, two Qi Kong exercises I love to practice to help balance the root chakra are Qi Kong. So Qi Kong is Qi is your life force. Qi Kong is a practice where we actually circulate that life force, where we move Qi energy, and it's very healing. And uh, two specific Qi Kong exercises I do to help anchor the root chakra to balance it and to help heal this energetic imprint of abandonment are the adrenals. We want to focus on uh, Qi Kong for the adrenals and Qi Kong for the kidneys. So maybe I'll drop a link below. Two quick exercises, super healing because we're moving energy, stuck energy to get the adrenal function, again, back into balance because the adrenal glands are responsible for that fight or flight. We want to protect our kidneys as well. And uh, yeah, if some of my clients are still on, I know Carissa knows that for sure. Um, it's all about the kidneys, sister. So then meditation. Oh, this is so delicious. This very specific meditation to balance the root chakra, okay? And in the root chakra, again, is where the abandonment leaves its greatest energetic imprint, okay? It, it's where it has orientated itself, like that feeling of like, I don't belong between like, you know, zero and maybe seven, eight years old. And so I know that was critical for me to work through with my daughter, having experienced the divorce of me and my husband at age five. So... The root chakra is all about feeling safe in this world. So in the meditation, again, it's coming back, and it's it's a couple of things you want to do in the meditation. It's, again, uh, really picturing your root chakra as a beautiful ball of red light. And inside that ball of red light is energy. When you breathe in, you're breathing in safety. You're breathing in nourishment. You're breathing in abundance. And as you breathe out, you're surrendering and letting that ball of energy open up and send red light throughout your whole body, letting it know it's safe. You can't, The soul can drop back down and anchor itself in the roots of being here, of belonging, of being worthy of belonging, of being worthy of being heard. And it's so nourishing, right, is to get that visual in, inhale with the abundance with that red energy, picture that ball at the base of your spine and your tailbone getting larger. Exhale, surrender in, and let that nourishing red energy hit every single cell in your body. You can also practice a chant, um, the effective chant for balancing the root chakra is lum. And when you do that, you create a tone. Okay, when you speak, you, you, there's a vibration. There's a vibrational occurrence. And so chanting creates a, a tone, right, that vibrates at a certain hertz. And your root chakra is going to tune to that tone. So, again, 3,500 years. I don't need a lot of research. I pretty much believe in that. So, again, it's L-U-M. It's lum. And as you're doing that and you're picturing this beautiful red ball of light, healing, wonderful, red, luscious, like blood-rich light, and you can imagine that ball in your root chakra starting to vibrate 
and build its power as you hum, as you chant, and it's going to amplify how you get that out to your body. Okay, boom, hope you're with me. This is so much fun. Oh my gosh. And then after you do that, so you can actually give yourself this entire like energetic imprint dissolving healing session. And then you want to practice it in the daily because that's also the key is, is being, I like to say diligent, like being diligent to your daily practice. So noticing when those thoughts come up. And I always say to my clients, like, is it making you feel awesome or icky? It's a pretty easy thing to see when you look at life like that. Oh, it's making me feel icky. Why? Go in, micro align. How do you do that? Well, we have a few techniques. I like to use four very specific techniques to relieve and release that energy. Uh, I have a relieve and release technique. I have a lighten up and be the light technique. So throughout the day, as you have that thought that's less than awesome, you can go right into these tools. And again, you get those micro alignments because healing your cellular structures, although it can be as fast as you want it to be, it does require you to practice it, right? Because we can get into these habits that have been decades old and it's just a matter of us being conscious and being present and getting aware. Uh, and one last little note, it's a little like a bonus, is like actually foods that nourish your root chakra and super fun. So maybe what I'll do too, because I'm just jiving, I like this is what's coming through me right now, is maybe I'll throw up a couple of recipes like for um, like delicious meals to support and balance your root chakra. But as you could probably guess, the root chakra, root vegetables, butternut squash, pumpkin, sweet potato, parsnips, carrots, onions, garlic, good stuff like that. Uh, it's a great time of year for that. So we can dive right in. I'll have fun. I, I'm going to play with that later. I actually have two recipes that are coming to mind right now. One is for what I call butter root soup, which is like divine. It's like every root vegetable pureed into this delicious soup. So hearty. It's perfect for fall. And we have like bounty of that harvest going on right now. And um, I also have uh, apple butter, butternut leek gratin which is like a really fun recipe. I do that every fall. So I might drop that in there too because apples are really good. Any red foods for red energy are going to be great. So eating a variety of red foods, also awesome. Strawberries, cherries, apples, all that good stuff. Uh, watermelon, tomatoes. Tomatoes are, are in right now. They're in season still. Um, and then turmeric and ginger are also really good. So I... Um, my daughter and I actually both drink turmeric ginger tea on a regular basis, and it's super nourishing for that root chakra. So just a little bonus. Listen, drop me a comment below. Let me know if this is valuable to you. What I'm really feeling is I want to open this training up, and I want to do healing, energetic imprints around the specific core feelings that come up for most of us humans and we're, we're all kind of the same, these core imprints of abandonment, of like self-worth, trust, guilt, shame, being alone, power, control, all sound familiar, right? And we get stuck in these patterns that keep us small, and we want to dissolve those energetic imprints on a cellular level, free ourselves up, and then guess what? You get to decide what code you lay down to activate new DNA to create an entirely new experience. How freaking radical is that? So if that speaks to you at all, I'm thinking I want to take like 10 peeps through perhaps, I don't know, I don't know how long the journey will be, but I want to run a course on really using what I call my chill method to heal your energetic imprints. And the chill method really involves getting down into the cells and clearing them through a process of contemplation, heart amplification, Learn, learning to listen to your intuition, bringing more love and light into your present experience, and literally dissolving on a cellular level those imprints so that you can, like I said, activate new DNA to, to really form a, like an entirely different external experience, right? It always is, it's always internal. It's never the external. The external 
that's the easy stuff. We just create that, we manifest that, we pull that in. So if you're interested, throw a comment below or shoot me an email. It's Diane with two N's at DianeSykes.com and let me know. I'm going to start putting it together. I'm thinking I'm going to cap it out at 10 peeps because I really want to customize this. This isn't going to be like a, like a course as much as it is going to be like, like some, some intensive coaching. So let me know, drop a line, shoot me an email and we will rock this out and let me know like what, where you feel stuck. Is it like a self-worth thing? Is it a trust thing? Is it shaming and guilt? Is that what feels like really sticky and icky for you? I'd love to know. I'd love to find out what, what's going on for you so I can really support you. That's it peeps. I am so psyched for your freedom. Boom. Hope this was helpful. And, um, yeah, let me know. I'm thinking very soon it's going to drop. Peace out.